How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do Instacart orders at Costco. Costco can be a pretty intimidating place to do Instacart orders and there are a few little things that you have to do differently. So it is easy to screw up a Costco order and that's why I want to teach you how to do it right. If you guys screw up Costco orders, Instacart will send you an email that's like, hey, if you do this again, you're, you're out of here, at least for Costco. So that is why it's very important whenever you guys go to do your very first Costco batch, you guys know what you're doing. So step number one, you guys need to go to a Costco. Personally, I drive about 20 to 30 minutes to get to my Costco. It is a bit of a drive, but I just stay in this area all day for the most part, and it pays pretty well. It's definitely worth the extra miles to get here, and yes, most Costco orders are longer deliveries, but they also just pay more in general. So you guys will have to do a little bit of experimenting here because all Costco's are a little bit different. My Costco has a drop every day at 10 a.m. I don't work Sundays, so I can't really talk about Sundays, but every other day it's 10 a.m. Even my Saturdays when the store actually opens up early, it's still 10 a.m. Your Costco could be different, and some Costco's even show their batches before the store opens online. So what I did and what I would suggest for you guys to do is just experiment. Go to your Costco about 10 minutes before they open and see if you guys see a bunch of batches just drop on your screen. If you guys see that, then maybe one day come to the store an hour before it actually opens or even a little bit more because some Costco's, like I said, actually show the drop before the store opens. Of course, if that happens, the store is open. It's just that online, their information isn't up to date. All right, so basically you guys need to be on your phone and you guys need to pay attention to a few things. You guys need to look at the units and then the miles. The items aren't very important because you guys could find a one item thing, but it's actually 50 units. That has happened to me before. I've had to buy 60 gallons of milk and I thought I was just buying a couple items. So it is important and just be prepared. A lot of companies use Instacart as basically a freight hauling service. So you guys might see that you have to get 10 packs of water. I would probably cancel those orders, but for the most part, if you guys don't swipe a batch like immediately, you're probably not going to get one. So anyways, I'll see you guys as soon as the Costco drop happens and I'll be right back. All right, so we just got a $69 order. Yes, 69. And uh, we have six items for one customer, 24 for the other customer. And I'm pretty sure it was like eight miles. So that is amazing. And we should be able to get this done in about an hour. And that is just a beautiful dollar per hour. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and do this order and throw everything in two carts because you need two carts when you're dealing with two separate customers, but I'll get to that in just a little. All right, so we finished that order. It was a mess. Two carts though, like I was saying, and I'm gonna separate it by trunk and then the rest of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up and see if it fits. So I'm trying to keep the wine safe because wine's expensive. First order, second order, and more. Second order. All right, so that order is done. Well, we still have to drop it off, but the hard part's done. We did have to get wine and they are out of what they requested, but they ended up um, asking for five bottles of something else at the same price. So technically this order should go up because that I think uh, was the only replacement we did. So. That's pretty cool. There was no service on the store and I was having to deal with support. So that slowed me down. So it took me 50 minutes to shop. But as you guys could see, it was a big order. Everyone was super nice on that order. Um, I'm probably gonna get back into like the advice part of this video as soon as I drop this off. So I can concentrate on that part. For now, we're gonna go ahead and drop this off. And it's all separated pretty well. So there shouldn't be any confusion at drop off. And especially with the alcohol, I want this to be pretty smooth because I will have to scan their ID. 
So hopefully they are there at their house. And they should be because they, they were responding the entire time. I'll probably see you guys when I'm done dropping us off and we'll see if we get another order and I'll get back into how to do Costco. All right, so we just finished those orders and it took us about two hours and it turned out to be closer to $74 because we had to add a bunch of wine. And I'm pretty sure that equates to like $37 an hour for those two hours of work. So that is like phenomenal, I'm super happy with that. But now let's go over some of the advice that I have for you newbies at Costco. Not all Costco's are laid out identically. For the most part, it's pretty simple and self-explanatory, but just know the store. And it is also important to know that sometimes they will move an item around. So just because you don't find the paper towels where they usually are, it doesn't mean that they didn't move them to some random end cap in the store. Costco drops these like crates right by the freezer section. And sometimes they will move random stuff, I guess that companies are promoting to those areas that are easy to uh, access. Also, I would use two carts if you guys can. I really prefer that method. I prefer it over using one of those big like flatbed carts just because it's very easy for the people at checkout and everyone at checkout loves me when I take two carts. It makes their job a lot easier and they're not stressing about scanning something wrong and causing problems for them and you. Now, if you do have a super bulky order that's just getting like a ton of like waters and Gatorades, then those flatbed carts are pretty nice for that. And it does help out the cashier when they're trying to check everything out. Also, if you guys see boxes around the store, sometimes I will take a box that is not being used on a shelf and start packing my stuff into that box just so it's easier at checkout don't fill it up too much otherwise they'll have to unpack it all when they scan it just try and make it easy so they could get their scanner out and scan it all another thing that's really important is just double checking that everything is separate if you have two carts it's a lot easier and so what I do is at the very end of my shopping I go to check out and then I check everything again I've caught a lot of mistakes in the past and it's very helpful to do this and it's gonna keep your customers a lot happier because they're gonna get what they wanted now, when you go to checkout, if you guys have the two carts, make sure that you guys have the barcodes ready. The only weird thing about Costco is you have to have that loyalty card. So make sure that you are using the loyalty card for A for the order with A. Sounds pretty self-explanatory, but I know a lot of people that have screwed this up and they accidentally used one card for both customers. Instacart does not like that. I would know from experience. So just double check that you're showing the person order A and it's also helpful if you guys just have order A in front of you the entire time and B behind you. Then it's easier to kind of know which order is what and when you go to check out it is even easier. The hardest part and most important part about Costco orders is keeping the orders separate. And almost every time I have two customers per order at Costco, especially at the drop because they're trying to get a ton of orders done really fast. It's almost kind of rare to get an order that is just one customer at Costco but it does happen. Also, when you guys are coming into the store, before you even start shopping on the app, there's an option that says view membership card. That is what you show the greeter and they do wanna see that. Also, just be prepared to move around the store a lot because there is literally no service in any Costco. It is like one bar and it doesn't even work half the time. So if you guys are stuck and it won't actually go through and transition your batch, just start wandering around the store until you find an area with service because chances are, if you guys just stay in the same spot, nothing's gonna happen for a long time. So yeah, that is some of my advice and this is what I've learned in the past few months of working at Costco, or at least with Instacart Costco orders. So for now, I'm gonna wait for another batch. I have been sitting here for 15 minutes, eating some lunch and hoping to see another batch pretty soon and I'll get back to you as soon as I get one. All right, so we just got a $30 batch and it is for an HEB. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just a local grocery store for Texas. Um, it is for a different HEB though, but I'm still gonna shop it here because I'm already in the parking lot. I know that the stock here is actually better than the other store. So I'm gonna shop it here and then go deliver it and that'll put me back close to Costco. So I think that'll put us at 102 probably by one, which sounds pretty sweet. Um, the order is only 18 units, but it is a bunch of weird um, stuff. And when I say weird, it's like stuff I don't usually get. So I'm gonna have to get some like things like duct tape and a lot of like maintenance stuff, Gorilla Glue and um, some gift wrapping stuff. And yeah, um, we'll see how this goes. It could either be very easy or very difficult, but for $30, I think it is definitely worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this order 
and hope everything is in stock and I'll see you guys in just a minute. All right, so we just finished that order and it was difficult. All the wrapping paper was like a huge mess and they're supposed to be in like these packs of three, but they're all ripped apart. So that sucked. So I use the HEB app to figure out locations of things that I do not know, especially if I'm at like a store that's not my normal store. And um, that was pretty helpful because I was able to find a few things, but even their app didn't list some of the, the things that I needed, like some of those glues. So they were laid out in weird areas. I think the shoe glue was actually by deodorant. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this off. We do have a little bit longer of a drive, but they were very nice and they paid me very well. So I am happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this off and I'll see you guys in a minute. That sucked a lot. So for some reason, one of those items, whenever I was in the store, uh, it did give me alert saying that they wanted um, to make sure it was 18 plus. The actual store never carded me or anything um, just because I, I wasn't getting medicine, I wasn't getting alcohol or anything like that. The only thing that I could like borderline even think of needing an ID for would be super glue, but I've never even heard of that. So uh, when I went to go drop off, they wanted me to verify the customer's ID for glue. I, I don't even know what the restricted item was and support didn't know either but the only thing that I could even think of being restricted is glue. So of course, the customer was not expecting to need their ID check for their order, so I don't think they were home. They gave me instructions saying, like, ring the bell, if I don't answer, just leave it on the porch. I was like, cool. But it made me verify their ID, so I had to talk to support, and because there is no actual medicine or um, alcohol support, told me to just leave it there. I sent them a picture, I let them know, but I did have to stand there for about 25 minutes waiting for them to uh, respond, which never happened, but um, support was able to take care of it. Even support couldn't get a hold of them. But it's all right, they're probably at work or something and not expecting to have to do an ID for a normal grocery run. Which is to be fair, like I still don't understand it and it cracks me up because support was literally like, Actually, we, we don't know why they want you to scan your ID. So that is the only time you're ever able to just leave something there with a, the ID check. You have to get it approved by support. Because technically you can't even go past that step without support's help. They make it impossible. So if you're a customer, that's something that might be helpful to know. Because if you're not home and you order alcohol or even like medicine, um, we literally can't leave it at your doorstep. It's like you lose your job if you do that. So yeah, um, support was acting like I would get a bump. They said if I returned it, I would get $15, but I didn't have to return anything because they couldn't find a restricted item. So that wasn't a big deal. Unless if a bump gets added to this later, we're at 102, which is still pretty good, but I just wasted a ton of time dealing with all that, which sucks. But um, we're back at Costco. We're gonna wait around for another order and see what happens. All right, just when I was about to lose hope and go home, I got a $64 Costco order that was, again, I think eight miles, and I think we're looking at like 20, 27 items or so. A few of those are doubles, so we're probably close to 30 units, but this is a really nice order. I've been sitting here for, I would say, probably 20 minutes or so, and I missed uh, a few batches, but they weren't that great, and now, I'm happy I did. So we're gonna go ahead and crush this order. That'll put us at at least like 160, 170. So that's pretty great. I think if we wanna hit 200 today, we can, but I just got back from vacation, so I kinda have a bunch of stuff to do. So we're gonna go ahead and do this order. I'll be back and I'll show you guys what it looks like and if it went well or not. All right, first order. So that order was pretty easy. Um, the store moved stuff around while I was on vacation, so the first order was a little harder, but now I know what they moved around and it wasn't bad. The only thing was um, one of the expensive meats wasn't scanning and it was basically identical to the picture, but I still texted the customer and I um, just wanted them to basically glance over it again just because you don't want to mess up on expensive meats at Costco. I have checked out for customers at Costco and spent 2000 plus mostly just on meat. So it's very important that you guys are double checking your meats if they aren't scanning because you would hate to make a $200 mistake. 
So I'm gonna go and drop these off. First drop off is 10 minutes away. Second one should be about the same. Then we'll be at like 170, pretty cool. All right, so we just did another $20 order and it was pretty smooth. It was a lot more miles, but it was closer to where I live. So let's go do a recap of today. Our first order was $73. Second order was $28.50. Third order was 67 and 12 cents, and our last order was $20 and 49 cents. So that puts us right around $190 for seven hours of work. So not too bad at all. Let's go ahead and do an hourly rate. That puts us at $27 per hour, which is awesome. I'll take that any day. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys are a little bit more confident to shop at Costco, and I'll see you guys on my next video.